Affinity Designer on the iPad. Today, it's out. We have a lot to talk about. In my videos and in my reviews, I try to be unbiased. I know it's not possible to be 100% unbiased, not to get too philosophical about that sort of thing, but I try to be fair when I'm reviewing software or hardware. That's what I'm aiming for. But here's the thing. I've been really excited about Affinity Designer coming to the iPad for a very long time. I've become very comfortable in the desktop software. I've even created an entire course around the desktop software. I've gotten to know some of the folks over at Serif who make this app, at least in an online sort of way. And I'm a big vector illustration fan. I got into illustration using Adobe Illustrator. It's one of the reasons I moved away from vector art in the past three years is because I've been waiting for a hardcore vector app to come to the iPad. So with all that laid out in front of you, I'm gonna just say it here. It's hard for me to be unbiased when I'm talking about Affinity Designer coming to the iPad. I am very excited about this. So since I'm not sure if I can be 100% unbiased about it, at least not today at this point, I'm just gonna lay out some of the things I really like about this app and do a little overview. First off, there are a lot of vector apps for the iPad. Most of them have been, uh, I'd say horrible. There are a couple standouts. There's apps like Concepts. It has a unique and different approach to vectors. And then there's Vectornator, which is a solid, more traditional app that does the basics pretty well. But Affinity Designer has everything that the desktop app does here on the iPad, or almost everything. It's new, so I haven't looked under every chair, but I've yet to find something that I'm used to using that isn't present here on the iPad. And overall, the app works surprisingly well, even without the Apple Pencil. So let's jump over to the iPad view and talk about some stuff. So the first thing you're gonna notice is how much is carried over from the desktop versions. We have all the stuff that you're used to along the left-hand side, and many of the things you're used to along the right-hand side. These are all our palettes. So to save room on the app, what they've done is minimized a lot of these palettes. So if you wanna see your strokes, you can see that here. If you wanna see your colors, all of that is over here. All your tools are over here. And the thing that makes this app kind of unique are the personas that are along the top. Right now we're in the draw persona. This is the one I spend the most time in. This is also kind of known as your vector persona if you wanna be drawing vector shapes. Uh, there's also a pixel persona. And when we select that, we get a different set of tools. And a pixel persona is similar to say drawing in Photoshop or a raster app. And then lastly, we have our export persona. If you're using this for design, because this isn't just an illustration tool, a lot of designers use this for layouts and things like that. There's an export persona, so if you're designing an interface and want to export all the pieces, parts of that interface, you can do that here as well. I'm going to be spending most of my time in the draw persona, the vector persona, because that's kind of the cool part about this app, I think. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set down my Apple Pencil because I'm surprised at how well this works with just your finger. If I use the pen tool and I just start drawing points, I can drag on one of those points, and then if I drag other points, I can create the shape that way and then I can tap to close it. It's very easy to do that. And then if I use my node tool, it's very easy to just grab something with my finger and move it around or grab one of the handles. I don't find myself accidentally grabbing the wrong thing a lot, which is really nice. Now, when you start to deal with really detailed vector art, you probably are gonna wanna be using the Apple Pencil to grab some of those points here and there. I've also noticed some other things, for example, in the stroke menu, if I wanna go into some of these real detailed areas, it's just easier to do this sort of thing with the Apple Pencil than it is with your finger. Some of the interface elements do get kind of small. But for the basic vector drawing things, you don't necessarily need the Apple Pencil to take advantage of a lot of what this app is doing. Now, one of the things that the desktop app has is along the top, it has a context sensitive menu. All of that stuff has moved down here to the bottom. They've also added a couple more tools. For example, I can deselect an object using these. I can turn my snapping options on or I can just delete things right here on the screen. Some of the other things that it has going on are some of the hand gestures. For example, things you would expect here, two fingers to undo, uh, three fingers to redo, stuff like that. There's a lot of stuff here I haven't even had the opportunity to really explore yet in terms of the hand gestures. For example, if I'm using the pen tool, I can place my point and then when I drag on my second point, it gives me these little anchor lines that we have going on here, our handles. Now, if I start drawing another handle, what happens if I put a finger down? Well, now it splits that handle. Might be kind of hard to see on the camera, 
but I can move that handle over here, and now when I go to draw another line, you would, you see it, it, it has split that handle. Oops, I'm still drawing a line. But you get the idea. A lot of the hand gestures are in there. And there's a lot of hidden stuff in here that you don't find right away with the hand gestures. If I take two fingers and I hold it down, I can then grab an object and I can duplicate it as many times as I want. Also, this context-sensitive menu down here comes in handy. If I want to grab multiple objects at once, I can drag across them but in a really complicated illustration, you might accidentally grab a bunch of stuff you don't want. So instead what I can do is I can tap on add to selection and now everything I grab, I'm going to add and I'm just gonna delete all of those. A lot of this may seem really basic and simple, but most iPad vector apps just don't get this right. I'm gonna open up uh, one of the illustrations. I think this is an originally an Illustrator file that I created several years ago, and I have some drawings in here. And you can see it's really smooth. Even when you're dealing with more complicated illustrations on the iPad Pro, you know, this is really, really fast. It's buttery smooth. It just works well. It seems when you tap things, for example, when I draw something, sometimes, when I go to undo something in other apps, it, it takes a second to think, and that's not going on here. Undo is fast, redo is fast. It's just happening instantaneously. So this entire experience feels really fluid and really smooth. So I've zoomed way into my football here. I'm gonna put my pencil down again, and I can tap on any of these shapes. Here, let me do that. Actually, I'm gonna use my, my node tool, my white arrow tool. And when I originally drew these, I think I drew these on like a, a Wacom Cintiq, and it's kind of sloppy in here because I just didn't care at the time. It wasn't gonna be seen, but now I can grab these nodes and drag them around. It's probably easier to do this uh, like with the pencil, but I just wanted to show that it is possible with your fingers to come in here and do that. One other nice thing that you're probably seeing as I go through here is when you when you grab a point and I'm dragging it around, I can't see where that point is underneath my finger, so it's given me this little magnifying glass to say, hey, this is what's happening underneath your finger. So it's like little stuff like that that I keep finding in this app that really makes it pretty cool and very easy, you know, to just go in here and and clean stuff up. So let's say I want to add some some texture to this. I'm going to jump over to my pixel persona here for a minute. Then I'm going to open my layers over here. Those are my brushes, my layers. And you can see it shows you every single curve. You can clean this up. You can group all these curves into layers. Right now it's just showing you every single shape that I drew to create this illustration. So say I wanna add a little bit of texture to this fellow's jersey. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open my layers and I wanna create a new pixel layer. So I'm going to select the layer that I uh, want to color within and then I'm gonna hit this plus and it's gonna let me create my own layer I already have vector layers you know, set up here. I'm gonna create a pixel layer. And then if I tap and hold on that, I can move it around anywhere I want. You'll see this blue line will show up in the middle of the layer. That's what I want. That means it's gonna be masked within that layer. So once it's masked in the layer the way I want it, I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna find a nice texture. I'm gonna move this way up. This is another nice thing about the interface is I can tap on the size of my brush, slide it over to make it bigger, slide it to the left to make it smaller. Uh, and then, let's see what this looks like. I can just add texture, and that's not gonna paint outside of this vector shape. It's, it's all contained within there. So that's Affinity Designer for the iPad. There is one downside that I see. It's really only a downside for me here, and that is, is when I look at my Affinity Designer course, Affinity Designer for Zombies plug, 50% off down below in the description. I'm probably gonna have to rework parts of it. Initially, I was hoping to just be able to rework parts of it and use the same course for the iPad, but the interface is so different that I think it's gonna be hard for a lot of students to follow along if they're using the iPad and watching that course. So if you're hoping to jump into that course and use it with the iPad, you definitely can. All of the features are there, but they're in different places and a lot of the behaviors of the tools, those things are located in different places. It's gonna be hard for you to find that stuff, especially if you're new to the program. So I would say for now, if you're interested in that course, just, just kind of hold off a little bit. I haven't decided if I'm gonna make an iPad version or not, but I will say that if you're using an iPad to take that course, probably gonna be a little bit of confusion. Anyway, there's so much more to cover. I have only scratched the surface. I'll probably be making more videos in the future. I appreciate you guys watching. If you have any comments or questions, if you're excited, let me know down below in the comment section. 
that's all I've got for now. Uh, I'm gonna be back tomorrow because uh, Procreate 4.1 came out today. I haven't had time to make a video. Uh, Astro Pad Studio 2 came out. Don't know if I'm gonna do a full video of that. It just seems like everything's coming out right now. So, anyway, I'll be back. I'll talk to you guys later.